Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and I'm back with another episode of What's That Item? And this time, it's Blade of Xiangyu. Now, this is the first time we are featuring a weapon for this series, and the reason why we are doing this now is because in two days' time, our Dong Zhuo lore series, called The Last Tyrant, will kick off. So it is only fitting for us to feature this weapon now, since the Blade of Xiangyu is Dong Zhuo's starting weapon in the game Total War Three Kingdoms. And in the game, this weapon is quite powerful, with over 1.7k melee base damage and 429 melee armor piercing damage. And since it is a sword, it has an attack rate of 30, which is the highest base value in the game. So it hits hard and often. And in terms of the stats provided, the character equipped with this weapon will get 18 points of authority. This is especially good for Dong Zhuo, who is a faction leader, so the extra authority stat will help increase satisfaction faction-wide, and also provide your army with additional morale. And to make up for its low armor-piercing damage, the blade naturally reduces the enemy armor by 25%, which will greatly magnify its impressive melee base damage. Additionally, holding this blade will enable scare on the character, which will help lower the morale of all nearby enemies, and to make it even better, it adds 40 points of charge bonus to your stat as well, so you will do more damage on your charge and for a short period of time after a successful charge. Basically, this is the best sword weapon in the game, and the only other sword that can compare is the ancient silver sword that starts the game in Sun Jian's hand, as it has a similar total damage value with slightly better distribution towards armor piercing damage. But it lacks a lot of the extra bonuses like armor reduction, scare, and charge bonus, while only providing some extra satisfaction and unbreakable, which are nice but not geared towards extra damage output like the Blade of Xiangyu. So why is this Blade of Xiangyu so strong? And more importantly, who is Xiangyu? Well, Xiangyu is not a character from the Three Kingdoms period, as he lived from 232 BC to 202 BC, which also happens to be the year when the Han Dynasty was first founded. So if you connect the dots here, you can say that he was in fact the final boss for Liu Bang, as Liu Bang worked to reunite China after overthrowing the Qin Dynasty to found the Han Dynasty. And the war between Liu Bang and Xiang Yu was called Chu Han Zhi Zheng, or the Chu Han Contention as they were allies first, who had worked together to overthrow the Qin Dynasty, only to turn on each other at the end, as there could only be one emperor. So since Liu Bang represents Han, Xiang Yu naturally represents the kingdom of Chu. And another interesting little trivia here is that the capital of Chu was in Pengcheng. So that is why Pengcheng has the designation of ancient capital in the game. Now obviously, Xiang Yu lost this war, but this does not take anything away from his prowess on the battlefield. If Lü Bu was the greatest warrior during the Three Kingdoms period, then Xiang Yu was the greatest warrior during the entirety of Chinese history. Let me repeat this. If Lü Bu was the greatest warrior during the Three Kingdoms period, then Xiang Yu was the greatest warrior during the entirety of Chinese history. And if you look at this picture here, you might notice one thing. His weapon of choice here is a ji, and not a sword. And historical records will back this up, as his weapon of choice was in fact a modified version of ji that was named gui shen, which means demon. And it was crafted from a meteorite that dropped in the commandery of kai ji, which is the southern commandery right under jian ye. And using the metal extracted from this meteorite, weaponsmith crafted a ji that weighed over 32 kilograms, or roughly 71 pounds, which is extremely heavy for a weapon. And not only did Xiang Yu wield this weapon, he used it as the one-handed weapon because of his great strength. And as a comparison, Guan Yu's famous green dragon crescent blade, which was also known for being extremely heavy, weighed only around 20 kilograms, or two-thirds the weight of Xiang Yu's ji. So this goes to show you how strong Xiang Yu was, but we still haven't explained the sword. 
So even though Xiang Yu's preferred weapon was a ji, he definitely also carried a sword for close quarter combat. But in terms of historical records, this blade didn't have any fancy names, even though later generations will refer to it as Po Tian Jian, or the Sky Piercing Sword. And this sword became famous around the Southern Dynasty in the 6th century, when a hermit named Tao Hongjing wrote a book called Gu Jin Dao Jian Lu, or the Record of Famous Ancient Blades, where he provided very detailed accounts of blade making, names of blades used by famous people in the past, and detailed accounts of the length, width, and decorations on all these famous blades, as well as backstories and lore of where these blades ended up after their owner's death. It was a very interesting read, but it was also definitely a work of fan fiction, as there were no sources to back up any of his claims. And it was from this book that claimed Xiang Yu's blade eventually ended up in a farm field in the Liang province, where a young Dong Zhuo would stumble upon it while farming and use it as his personal weapon sense because it was very sharp and strong and could cut through jade like slicing through mud, which is the Chinese version of hot knife through butter. But Dong Zhuo didn't know the significance of this blade until he took control of the capital when Cai Yong, who was a court official at the time, saw this blade and informed Dong Zhuo that this was in fact the famous blade of Xiang Yu. So that is why Dong Zhuo starts out in the game with this blade for both his 182 and 190 start, and why the flavor text on the blade mentions slicing through jade. But sadly, none of this have any historical backing, as Dong Zhuo's preferred weapon before he got fat was bow and arrow, as he was an excellent horseback archer due to his upbringings in the Liang province. And to find out more about Dong Zhuo's upbringing, make sure to come back in two days as our Dong Zhuo lore series called The Last Tyrant will kick off. So see you all then. Bye!